This is Mark Kepler, Purdue Extension Service here in Fulton County. I got an opportunity today to come out to the community garden here on 6th Street. We're going to take a look at some things that are going on in our community as far as diseases that are out here um, in vegetable plants. And so this is my opportunity to do that today. I have gotten a lot of calls this year on a problem in tomato plants. And we're going to look at some of these problems in these tomato plants. A lot of it is related to the amount of rainfall we've gotten this past year. And these two problems are fungus diseases. And if you take a look at a disease situation, what you end up having to have is you have to have the disease, the susceptible plant, which is the tomato plant in this situation, and the right kind of weather. So all the rainfall we had early on this spring allows that rain to stay on the leaves of those plants. And so when that fungal disease comes along, the spores are out here floating along. They come in, they land on that film of water, and they actually germinate, kind of like a seed does, and just starts growing a, a little thing called a hyphae right into that plant and growing down there and hurting that plant. So let's take a look at these tomato plants right behind me here. Very typical of a tomato plant this year. And that is at the bottom of the plant, we start seeing some leaves start to die off. That's because the fungus comes out as a spore and the spores are probably been laying on the ground from production in past years. And those spores then will splash up to the under leaves. And so that's why it starts on the bottom. This disease, there's actually two of them called early blight and septoria leaf spot. Septoria leaf spot is a disease that puts these spots that we're going to take a look at here on these on this tomato plant. So we see the spots right here on the leaves of this plant and that's septoria leaf spot. Early blight will give it more of this dying on the edges like this plant has here. More of that overall area that's, that's dead down in through there. And that's what we look like with early blight. These are both fungus diseases. And what you have to do is you have to protect the plant from getting that disease. And the way you protect the plant from getting that disease is to put a fungicide spray on it that protects it. Now, we don't have, as homeowners, sprays that are available to us that actually cures this problem. We can only protect it. So if we go ahead and spray this plant with a fungicide and coat the leaves, think of it as kind of a protection on those leaves and it'll prevent these spores from splashing up and germinating and growing on those leaves. Now the problem is some of these leaves already have that disease on it but we don't see it right now but it is on there and so that disease will come up on there and it'll it'll go ahead. Lots of times what I normally see is with this disease by the time we get to that normal frost date in October our tomato plants are already have been killed off from this disease. This year, because of the rainfall, because of the wetness early on, we'll start seeing these tomato plants die well before that time. And so we'll be seeing these die along that line. So on this plant here, a fungicide, and the fungicide that's the most common and the one that's available in our community is one called Daconil, that's the brand name, D-A-C-O-N-I-L. And it contains a fungicide with the active ingredient chlorothenil. And so that's what we look at for our community. Let's spray this plant probably before the rain. Make sure we do it before the rain and, and protect it during that time period. So this is septoria leaf spot and this is also uh, early blight on tomatoes and this is the problem we're seeing in our area. We've moved to another location in the garden and we're going to be taking a look at some zucchini plants here. And this one really affords me an opportunity to look at a multiple number of problems that this plant is having. In fact, this plant we're going to be taking a look at is an absolute disaster. And this is where the insects and diseases that we have in, in gardening just come together and really make it very difficult to grow some plants. So let's take a look at this zucchini down here. Nobody wants their zucchini to look like this. Wilted down and having all sorts of problems associated with it. First off, let's talk about why these plants are wilted to begin with. The wilt comes from an insect called the squash vine borer. Soon after these plants are put into the ground and have an opportunity to start growing, about the time that normal squash plants would start to put out runners, these zucchinis are bush type, so they don't put out that runner. But about that time, there's a moth comes along. It doesn't really even look like a moth. And it comes down and it lays its eggs down towards the base of this plant. Those eggs hatch out into a worm called the squash vine borer. That borer then ends up burrowing into this stalk 
And on this plant we've got right here today, there is one of those worms right in there. And the reason this plant is wilting down is because that worm has tunneled in there and essentially is tunneling through the main part of the stalk and so moisture cannot get up into the upper leaves up here, which causes this thing to, to, to wilt down. My recommendation to people is, once you get to that plant, is get to that size where it starts to grow and starts to take off, we have to put an insecticide spray down towards the base. Don't need it out on the leaves, but just down in towards the base to try to control this insect, because once he's inside of there, it's very difficult to try to control him. Now, I know people that come along with things like razor blades and cut into that stalk and try to cut him with the stalk, but the damage is already done. Once they've got to this point, they have really affected the yield and these plants will start wilting down on us. The insecticide that most gardeners could use is that common one called Seven and another one we call Permethrin, P-E-R-M-E-T-H-R-I-N. Those are two insecticides that sprayed down in this area would help control the squash vine borer. Again, you take a look at that, it's bored right up in there. So that's one of the problems it's got. That's the biggest problem it's got. But now, later on in the season, another thing starts to happen, and we start seeing these gray insects trocking around it. And it's called a squash bug. And the squash bug is something that once the zucchini start coming on, and once we have the plants start to develop, this squash bug has a little mouth part that it sticks into the zucchini, and pumpkins is very, very susceptible to this and it starts drawing the juices out of it. And at some point you can see these gray bugs just covering a pumpkin later on in the season. About the time we get into September and really start looking at a harvest of a pumpkin, these are really, really bad. So these gray bugs are called squash, squash bugs. And on this plant, one of the ways you can tell it is, there, there you see these gray insects down here. And also besides that, the insect eggs are on the leaves. On this leaf right here, this little group of reddish looking things are the eggs from that insect. And so we'll take a look at a lot of the different leaves in this, this plot and we can see how these eggs will be found in this situation. So again, I need to take a look at an insecticide to try to control this. First off, when they're eggs, no insecticide is going to touch them. So I'm going to have to hatch out and be tiny little insects to begin with before that insecticide is going to work on them. And so that's when we want to use an insecticide. I mentioned using seven down below for the squash vine borer, but for the squash bug, seven really has very little effect on them. Over the years, those insects have built up a tolerance to that, and so we have to use other types of insecticides, like that permethrin I referred to earlier, would be one of those things that can be used on these squash bugs. The other thing about these squash bugs, come winter time, they'll come visit you in your house and in your garage and locations like that. Many times you'll find them behind things in the garage and they stink. They absolutely smell and you will not forget that smell when you've got into these things. It's a, it's a, a pungent, stinky odor that they have associated with them. And so they're bad news. Usually if it's the first time you've ever planted squash, you probably won't see them. By the next year, you'll start seeing them show up and up. So this is the second or third year for this garden here. And again, we're gonna, we, they found the place and they'll be here from here on out. and We've got to take care of them. All right, well, that's two things that are wrong with this plant. Let's take a look at a third one that's going on. I picked this plant as a better indicator of what the problem we have here. Now we're going to take a look at a disease that's on this plant. And this is something we call powdery mildew. And if you take a look at this leaf, you can see some white patches that are on that leaf. And that's what powdery mildew looks like. Eventually, it takes this whole leaf and it'll wilt it down. In fact, it'll kind of wilt this leaf down and the whole plant will wilt down. But it doesn't look like that wilt situation we have with the other one. With powdery mildew, it kills the leaf off. The stalk will still be sticking up there, and eventually it'll wilt down. Powdery mildew is a disease that has to be contained. You have to use fungicide sprays. About the best fungicide spray available to us for this, as homeowners, is, uh, is Dacanil. I talked about it earlier. It's the fungicide we would use on tomato plants. And this is powdery mildew. Dacanil will work on that, too. There's also a home remedy that of using baking soda and horticulture oil. It's a fine horticulture oil that you could use um, also to help take care of a powdery mildew on these plants. If you think back, if you ever had an opportunity to grow pumpkins, usually by the end of the season, the leaves on that plant has pretty much turned white. 
and that white then starts to wilt down those leaves, those weeds start to die off, and eventually it gets down to the pumpkin and gets on the stem of the pumpkin, and there what it ends up doing is it just causes that pumpkin to be not nice and green at harvest, but it tends to be a shriveled up pumpkin stem that easily breaks off, and then that pumpkin, when you take it home and you set it out on your porch, it gives it an avenue for a rotting fungi to get in there and just rot it down your porch, and so they don't last very long at all. So that's an example of powdery mildew, and that's a problem that we have on a lot of squash plants, and this is a problem we're going to have on this zucchini, which is a member of the squash family. So that's three things that we can take a look at that's going on with this, this zucchini uh, out here in the garden. And so it's really, really tough sometime to, uh, to combat these different diseases. We have to stay on top of the situation. We have to do something about the insects, and we've got to be aware of the diseases that come along. Now we've gotten to the cabbage in the garden, and with the cabbage, as you take a look at it, not a whole lot of problems with cabbage except one big one, and actually it's three different ones, and that is the holes that we start seeing in the leaves of this cabbage are caused by worms, and there are a variety of worms that get into these. The cabbage looper, and the diamondback moth, and the cabbage worm are the three ones that we see in here. And so what they do is they just go through here and they eat the cabbage, and not only do they eat holes in it, and they can really just absolutely riddle this cabbage full of holes, but of course they always leave behind their manure. So what goes in one end, something comes out the other end. So not only do we have holes in it, we got manure covering our cabbages. Not a very good situation to deal with. So one of the options you have to do is you have to look at a control of this insect. Now we've got a lot of insecticides that we've got, and over the years, especially with the case of the diamondback moth, they have become resistant to these insecticides. So now, still, one of the better products to use on this cabbage to try to control those worms is something derived from a natural bacteria found in the soil called Bacillus thuringiensis. I know it's a big word and kind of tough to deal with, but sometimes it's referred to as BT, Bacillus thuringiensis. And it was naturally found in the soil, and they've taken that naturally occurring bacteria and they put it into a powder and a product that you can use where you can spray it on these plants. And so BT sprayed upon these plants will actually be ingested by the insect and once it's ingested it'll, it'll just cut open its stomach lining and really rip up this insect. It's a little slow acting but it eventually does the job on them and it's called BT. Try to get it on while they're very, very young and we first start seeing this kind of a problem. But I would encourage you to use that over all the synthetic insecticides we got. I think that's an excellent one to use. As these plants start to mature and get along in their age, one of the things we start seeing is areas like this on the leaf. And this is a situation called black rot. And if we get a really good close-up of this, we can see little black specks in there, which are the fungus spores that are working on that leaf and causing this disease in that leaf. And this is black rot. It's something you're going to deal with with cabbages. Uh, from time to time, and anytime they get any maturity on them whatsoever, it's a very, very tough one to control. Homeowners don't have a whole lot of choices of what they can do as far as fungicides go. Just realize that that's what's going on in these different cabbages. Well, we've taken a look at a few different things out here as far as tomatoes and squash and, and cabbage goes, and there's a whole lot of other plants can have a variety of different problems associated with them. Uh, we didn't get to see some big green worms at all on those tomato plants this time around. But at the Purdue Extension Service, we're really here to help you with a couple different publications, some things you might do. When we talk about putting on insecticides, fungicides, things like that on these plants, certain ones work on certain things and other ones don't work on others. So it's a good idea to get an idea ahead of time which insecticides, fungicides are the best ones to use for the problem you've got. Our office is at the fairgrounds, and if you want to stop out there sometime with something you've got, we'd be happy to take care of it. I'm Mark Kepler. Thank you.